What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty powerful little Ryzen powered mini PC known as the Chewy RZ Box. And over the past couple years I've tested a lot of mini PCs from Chewy, but this has definitely turned out to be the most powerful one that I've seen from this company so far. And it all comes down to the CPU they chose to use in the RZ box. This is actually powered by a Ryzen 9 4900H, 8 cores, 16 threads with a boost up to 4.4 GHz. This mini PC does come included with a 90 watt power supply, and when it comes to I.O., up front here we have a single USB 2.0 port, USB Type-C, and our audio jacks. Moving around to the back side, we have our power in, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, they've also left VGA here for some reason. We've got dual gigabit Ethernet, two more USB 2.0 ports, and two USB 3.0 ports. I would love to see more USB 3 on this unit, but this is the way it's set up right now. When it comes down to these mini PCs, we definitely have some power here, because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 4900H. We have 8 cores, 16 threads, with a base clock of 3.3 and a boost up to 4.4. Built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 1750 MHz, but we can overclock these and I've taken them up to 2000. 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, a 512 GB M.2 SSD, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and the unit I have right now is actually running Windows 11, but you could always just install Windows 10 or any variant of Linux as long as it supports x86. And by the way, you will be able to buy the RZ box in a bare bones configuration, that way you can add your own RAM and storage. Now I wanted to get in here and just see what kind of upgradeability we have. The top and bottom are constructed of aluminum, and I kind of wish that they would have integrated this aluminum into the cooling system. It definitely would have made sense because we do have a lot of mass here. But the midsection is plastic, and in order to get in here, all we need to do is remove these eight screws from the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and get these out. And from here, we can actually access the RAM and the storage. So we do have an extra M.2 slot. You can easily add up to a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD. And you can upgrade the RAM on this all the way to 64 gigabytes. But like I mentioned, we're sitting at 16 right now, running at 3200 megahertz. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I personally love adding full-size graphics cards to these smaller PCs. And since we have access to this M.2 slot, by the end of this video, we will take a look at that. I'm super interested to get into some testing. And in this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some PC games, and emulation. I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up real quick, and I'll be right back. We'll do a quick overview of Windows. Alright, so here it is. I've installed a bunch of stuff that we're going to be testing out. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 9 4900H, 8 cores, 16 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics, which normally run at about 1750 MHz, but I've overclocked these. So if I run a render test, we'll go to Sensors, you'll see that our GPU clock is now at 2000 megahertz. Really easy to do. I personally use AMD Tuning Utility to do it. I was really interested to check out the TDP on this APU here, and uh, right out of the box, it's actually set pretty high. We'll just start Prime 95. Right over here, I know it's a bit hard to see, it jumps up to 60 watts, but we're sitting at about 45 watts on the TDP, and this will allow us for some really nice stable clocks on the CPU and the GPU side of things. With this kind of wattage, we will have to keep an eye on that temperature, but so far it's actually been looking pretty decent. So the first thing I want to get out of the way are the benchmarks. Geekbench 5 is looking really nice on the single and the multi-core scores. Single, 1241, multi, 7836. When it comes to 3D Mark, I did want to test out Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for the GPU, 8,388. Night Raid came in with a 16,470. And finally, we have Firestrike with a 3,922. And if we take a look at the monitoring graph, you can see that our GPU kept that stable clock of 2,000 megahertz, and the CPU went all the way through. It did underclock itself just a bit by the end. I think we were pulling a little too much power there. And this could potentially be fixed using something like that APU tuning utility I talked about at the beginning. But now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. And first up, we have CSGO 1080p medium settings. I got an average of 94 FPS out of this one. Looking good. And if I turn VSync on, I could probably take it up to high and just run this at 60. But I wanted to see how high it would go. And it's definitely playable on this system.
Moving over to Injustice 2, 1080p, medium low mix. When I first went into this, I went with medium settings, but I had a few dips down to around 57. So I turned a few of these settings to low just to get that constant 60, and it's playing really, really nicely. Performance with GTA 5 actually turned out to be really impressive for an iGPU. 1080p normal settings, I got an average of 72 FPS out of this. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 900p with a medium low mix. If you turn this to low, you can go to 1080p and get an average of around 62 FPS. I did see a couple dips down to 58, but with it set up at 900p with a nice little mix here, we got an average of 72 FPS. Next up, Halo Infinite. Here it is at 900p, all low settings, and we only got an average of 31 FPS. Well, here, that elevator should take us to the surface. And finally, here, Doom Eternal 900p low with dynamic resolution scale on. We got an average of 63 FPS, looking really good here, especially for Doom Eternal on one of these Radeon 8 GPUs. That dynamic resolution scale is really where it's at with this game. So with the PC gaming out of the way, now it's time to test some of our favorite higher-end emulators. And first on the list, we have Wii U using SimU, Vulcan backend, 1080p with this one. Now if you wanted to run Breath of the Wild, you could do it at 1080p but I would suggest only doing it at 30. I did see some dips on that game down into the 50s, but at 720p, you can get away with 60 all day long with this chip here. And it's pulling around 35 watts with that game. This one here, we're around 28, not too bad at all. And the final emulator I wanted to test for this video was RPCS3 for some PS3 emulation. We've got the Vulcan back in, Skate 3, and that CPU is definitely working. This emulator in general loves those extra cores and threads. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're pulling close to 50 watts, and this is the highest temperature I've seen on that CPU while gaming or emulating games at 91 degrees Celsius. Another thing I always do while I'm testing these mini PCs is check total system power consumption from the wall. This is always plugged into a kilowatt meter. At idle, it's about 12 watts. Average gaming, 46. And in my extreme test, when I max out all eight cores, 16 threads, and the built-in GPU, we pulled 71 watts from the wall. Now, one thing I'd actually love to see changed with this is a better cooler. It actually doesn't thermal throttle while you're gaming, and as you saw, we're at around 45 watts with it. At idle, it was around 34 degrees Celsius. Average gaming was up there at 77. And the maximum that I got this to hit, which it did thermal throttle there using Cinebench R23, was 101 degrees Celsius. But I'd say there's plenty of room in this case for a much larger cooler, and I really wish they would have put one in here from the factory. And before I wrap this video up, I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of what's coming next with this thing. So we do have decent power for what it is, but we can always add an eGPU. Now this doesn't have Thunderbolt, but we do have that extra M.2 slot. So what I've done here is just add an RX 590. We can go higher in with it when I do my next video, but as you can see, we've got that Radeon RX 590 and it definitely ups the performance. So instead of running Forza Horizon 5 at 900p, medium low settings, we're at 1080p, high settings, and we're getting over 80 FPS with the RX 590 attached. Performance is absolutely amazing with this little setup, and like I mentioned, I can go with a higher end card if that's something you guys want to see. I do like the way the RZ box is set up if you're going to be tinkering with it. We could just pull that side panel off, and as you can see, everything sits really nicely right next to it. But yeah, I will have that next video coming up soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But when it comes to the RZ box in its stock form, it's not a bad little mini PC, given that we only have integrated Radeon graphics. 
Like I mentioned, I do wish they would have upgraded the cooler here because we have plenty of room inside of the chassis for a much beefier cooler to keep that CPU nice and chilly. It's actually a great performer, and if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on the RZ box, let me know in the comments below, and definitely keep an eye out on the channel because I will have a full eGPU video coming up. I think we can get some amazing performance out of this little setup. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.